Yeah, I want to talk about the Hidden Valley Syndrome of Ecuador. And what I want to describe is a country that has endless little microclimates, endless little valleys, endless little southern exposure hillside. It's a fantastic country for finding these little hidden gems tucked away in the middle of somewhere or nowhere. That's how diverse this country is. If you want 25 degrees every day, you go down 400 meters. If you want 20 degrees any day, every day, you go up 200 meters or 300 meters or 400 meters to find your sweet spot. This place here, I think we have a fluctuation between 10 degrees at night up to 24, 23, 22. It never gets hot, really hot here. So you feel completely comfortable every day. Sometimes at night it might get a little bit cold, especially if it's really windy. But that's the extent of the weather. It's just so predictable. You get a little bit of rain, you get a little bit of wind, you get a little bit of cooler temperatures, you get a little bit warmer temperatures, and you can sort of decide where you want to live. There's probably no other country in the world where you can determine your weather, basically your, your preference of where you want to live. If you live further south, for lower, it gets probably unbearable for a lot of people. If you move up higher into the mountains, it probably gets unbearable because of the winds that are going to hammer you all the time. You can find these Goldilocks zones or these perfect weather zones. And the only limitation when it comes to growing stuff is you can't grow like really warm, heat loving plants. The mangoes and, you know, even tomatoes, cucumbers might give you a bit of trouble. So you have to sort of decide uh, where you want to live, how you want to live, how isolated you want to live, how, um, how important it is for you to grow food in the first place. Do you want to be self-sufficient? Do you want to uh, have a collection of ornamental plants? Do you, it depends on your gardening preferences. Growing food, is never an issue here growing a lot of food might be an issue growing specific foods and plants is going to be an issue because you know certain things prefer more heat certain things prefer it very cool so are the andes the best place to uh, be a gardener i would say yes you know if you are in 35 degree temperature heat and it never cools down at night I'm um, sure your plants thrive really well, but what about you? How well are you doing in that heat? That's a big question. You know, there's lots of issues now where um, there's not just crop failure, there's complete crop failure. Like Mexico, for example, this year had uh, incredible droughts and they lost most of their corn production. Brazil had a good year in corn. So it's like this world fluctuation, this disaster, uh, crop failure, this, this overheating, this lack of watering. The Andes don't have any of those issues. They might get um, a massive a washout, rain washout, but that most likely is the extent of it. You're not going to get hit by frost too early or at all. You're not going to uh, run out of water most likely. There's water almost everywhere on the Andes. The uh, the warm air comes, hits the Andes, and tries to climb over top, but drops its water back into the system. So there's lots of water here. They call a lot of these regions Aguador instead of Ecuador. That's how much water is here. Um, there's lots of opportunity to uh, start agricultural businesses here. Just because we have 365 days of growing, there seems to be lots of opportunity you know it could be coffee planting a whole hillside with coffee the governments are even helping with that providing all the plants so there's many opportunities in agriculture here um the country sure could use um you know 
more agricultural business because I think the number is 73% of all men work in this labor intensive construction in this country. The cement, you know, casting these cement floors with 50 guys at a time. So there is that labor intensity in uh, construction, but everything else is lacking. So you're going to find um, lots of labor force here, uh, a very willing labor force inexpensive land is still reasonable um, towards inexpensive if you're buying bigger parcels so there is lots of opportunity it's just a matter of uh, you if you're going to decide on Ecuador you sort of have to make a commitment because um, the Andes have one huge problem and that is the soil is paper thin so if you come here be prepared that you have to uh, you know improve your soil depth um, buying topsoil is almost impossible, it doesn't exist, so you have to be very creative making soil, uh, composting, whatever it may be. So that probably is the biggest issue with Ecuador, is, uh, especially in the Andes, is that paper-thin soil layer has to be improved before you can do very much. But if you're willing to do that, then this turns into a, an oasis where you can grow anything and uh, have a very easy-going life.